we're going to talk about um, believers, the B believers digest, believers digest. I'm, I'm the first to start this um, in this series called Holy Habits of Grace. And we talked about spiritual discipline. If you haven't heard last week's message, make sure you go back and listen to it. But we, we are, we're focusing on seven habits, spiritual habits. How many know that as Christians, we need some holy habits? Yeah. Amen. There's enough unholy habits <laughs> out here. And we need to employ some good habits. And um, this, this, this is a habit that is the, this is the foundation of all spiritual disciplines. And it's the word of God. That's what we're talking about. So as we were um, preparing for this, we saw that, that the word of God is the foundation for every other habit, spiritual yeah. habit. And without the word, those other habits are not, um, they don't have anything rooted in them. And so all of the habits, prayer, fasting, meditation, resting, worship, um, servitude, fellowship, they all have to be rooted in the word. Amen. Amen. You can't even pray properly without the word. Yeah, you know, you can't even really fellowship properly. So the word is the foundation for all other spiritual disciplines. And as we as we thought about believers digest, believers digest. So as a kid, I used to get this magazine called Reader's Digest. Well, I, I, I don't necessarily I would get it. I think my mom had it and I would read it. And I just subscribed to it recently. It's $5 a year. <laughs> I think it's $10 a year now. Uh, but it's not the same <laughs> as it was, well, at least in my mind. I, maybe it's the same and I just grew. You think about Reader's Digest. Um, when I was in seminary, um, I was, they taught in this particular seminary, they, they taught us called, what is called Digest. And, and they were trying to prepare us to get the most out of our books. In one class, I could have 12 books. Um, and I ended up getting a C plus in that class, thank God. Some people failed, so I'm most grateful for the C. It was 12 books. <laughs> That's a lot of books for one class. And then you had all the other classes. Um, you had at least you know four or five other classes, including Hebrew and Greek. So they taught us to, to go in and to digest the material so that it just wouldn't be that you st you're reading the book trying to answer the question for the quiz or the exam and, and forgetting about it. But the purpose of that digest was to actually make it a part of you. Yeah. So let's think about naturally speaking, digesting food. You know, some food that we eat are not, it's not good for us. I mean, this took me, it took, this is a revelation to me. A long time ago, I used to love cereal. You know, you have, you know, my favorite at one time was Captain Crunch. And, and somehow I got a revelation, and I do call it a revelation. I realized there, there's no, there's not much nutrition in it. It's junk. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm feeding junk. It tastes good. I like the aftermath of the cereal with the milk, but it, it, it's not, <laughs> it's not, there's nothing, there's very little nutrition to it. So there are certain foods that we eat, it, 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 they, don't, they don't do anything for us. And, and when we talk about believers digest, we, we, we understand that not only are we to just read the word, and for years I've encouraged people to read the Bible. But I realize not everybody can read one. And when I say that, I'm not saying, you may be able to pronounce the word, but understanding. I mean, how many know there's a difference than reading than just going through, you know, you can read real fast since I read it. But I was trying to communicate what I'm communicating now, that we need to digest the word. Not only should we read it or study it or memorize it or confess it or pray it, but we should allow the word. When food is digested properly, it does, it, it, it adds to our body. It gives our bodies something to work with. It gives us, give our bodies food and fuel to, to be able to be the best that we can be. When food is digested, right, properly, if we're eating the right diet, 
So what are we eating? You know, I, I read a lot of books and, and when, when I start reading it, I, I can tell when the spirit of God's like, leave that alone. No, it's not good for you. You know, some stuff, there's some books I was taught growing up, never throw away books, but there's some books, certain books I, grew, I threw away recently. It was no good. Not healthy for you. It's not spiritually healthy for you. There's some things you don't need. You don't need to have a satanic Bible in your house, <laughs> right? Oh, I'm studying other religions. <laughs> you don't, there's certain things you don't need to have. And so uh, we're going to talk about the believer's digest. God's word is precious. It is um, spiritual food for all who would digest it or ingest it. God's word is both human and divine. God's word is both human and divine. What do you mean, Pastor Dwayne? I thought it was just a divine book. God used men to write the Bible. All right. Sometimes people have a problem with God speaking to people today. You know, oh, God does, God's not speaking to them. But you don't believe the Bible because God spoke to these men to write this word. So when we say it's human, it really is a perfect demonstration of Jesus being 100% God and 100% human. The word of God is. So we see God using men, inspiring men to write under his authority. They, once the translation says the, 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 these holy men of God were carried away in the spirit and God used their vocabulary. He used their knowledge. He used whatever he could to maximize, to get his word a, across to them. And so we know that the Bible is written in Hebrew, um, Greek, and Aramaic, and we see that there are many different translations. So our translations are not perfect, but the scriptures in the original manuscripts are, all right? So sometimes when you translate, sometimes you can, you can use a word that, for example, give you an example, in Romans 8, you see um, spirit, 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 spirit. Sometimes it's capitalized in certain translations, and it should not be. It's really the human spirit and not necessarily the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, I believe, it says the fruit of the Spirit. It's not the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but it's the fruit of the human, the recreated, born-again spirit. You know, growing up, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't have fruit. <laughs> We're the fruit bearers. Right. Um, Jesus, says, I'm the vine. You are the branches. My father is the husbandry. Right. And so we are to produce fruit. The Holy Spirit is not producing fruit. We are. So readers digest, believers digest. We're talking about um, the word of God, his word. God's word is the most important words on the earth. His word has creative power. The Bible says he sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and he healed them. He, his word saves. We're saved by the word of God. The Bible says in Peter that we are born again of, in, of incorruptible word of God, the incorruptible word of God, the seed of his word. Um, it goes on, it says, his word delivers. How many know God's word delivers? If you're just getting the word and let the word get in you long enough, it'll deliver you from any situation that you're in. Let's let the word do the work in us. The word will change your attitude. The word will change your heart. Sometimes people don't need deliverance like casting devils out. They just need the word of God in them. Because if you get that word in you, that word will start purging you. Come on. Amen. The word of God is wisdom. As we're talking about the holy habits of grace, we understand the word of God must be the foundation for all spiritual beliefs and disciplines. It isn't if it isn't found in the word, it isn't a spiritual discipline. Um, the word the word of God reveals to us these spiritual disciplines so that we can employ them by 
um, we can employ them as believers. So daily word intake, all right? How many take vitamins? How many of y'all take vitamins? All right? Well, most of us do, right? If vitamins are good. They're supplements, right? They're supposed to help what we're lacking in our food, whether it was raised, or whether the food was gathered correctly, or, or maybe the cow wasn't raised in, in a perfect environment, or the chicken, or unless you go to one of those organic places. Um, we, we need supplements, right? There, there's th- oh, we're not eating properly. We're not eating the right things. We're not eating life. We're not eating something that is alive, something that's going to produce life in us, something that's going to give us energy, certain food, certain bread, so, you know, certain things will give you energy. It will, I, at one point I, I was able to eat some things that actually helped me to maximize my energy, keep me alert, keep me fully. And then I forgot what it was. <laughs> so I have to go back up. But there's certain things, certain foods, when you eat it, it brings you down. I mean, you just kind of like, oh man, I mean, where's my energy? Other foods, it just, it kind of, it, it gives you, it helps you to become all who God made you to be. So the word of God will help you and I to be who God created us to be. Amen. Um, daily word intake is necessary for every child of God. The, he's the bread of life. Um, God has given us his word so that we can live every day. Jesus said it like this in Matthew 4, man should not live by bread alone. And, 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 and in my mind at the time when I was really meditating that, it was like man should not live by um, Captain, Crunch's, Captain Crunch alone. Man should not live by your favorite food alone. By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, you can't live without the word. You, you can't make it without the word. In the days that we're living in, we need the word of God. We need to spend, we need to have a daily encounter with the word of God. Every day you need to make some time. I don't have any time, then you're doing something wrong. You got to make time for the word. You got to make time for the word. Daily intake is necessary. The Bible is more important than water, food, and anything else we need for life. And at the same time, we need those things. All I'm trying to say is the word of God is necessary. It needs to be taken seriously. So go with me in your Bible, John chapter 8. The Believer's Digest. The Believer's Digest. This is what we we go to every day. (laughs) Amen? Amen. And I hope you are... Keeping up with your Bible reading. If you fell behind, just get back and start reading it. Um, um, John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. We we started this last week. We we looked at this. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. How many know we need the truth to set us free? There's some bondages that we don't even know that we have. But when you let that word take, a, take its root in your life, it will set you free. There are lies that there are certain lies that we have believed and the word of God will set us free because we'll know the truth. We'll have intimacy with the truth and the truth will set us free. If you are going to be Jesus disciples, you're going to have to abide in his word. You're going to, the word abide means to dwell. It means to stay. Abide, letting that word abide, in, the word must be your everything. Come on. Amen. 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 You got to make time for the word. You, no matter what's going on in your life, the word got to be priority. That prior, the word of God should take priority in our lives. It should take importance in our life. It should be not only the first, first place in our life, it should be the center of our life. We should build our lives around the word. Amen. Amen. We should move across the country, across the world because of the word. Amen. 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 Say, you know what? I, I, I got this opportunity to go to this job. I mean, my job is moving me or this opportunity. And I'm going to make sure that I have a church that's good nearby. Because I'm, I'm going to move and I'm going to get this job, nice paying job, but also I'm going to find, get, get a good, good church. I, I think that it's right for people to move across the world 
for our church. I do. I mean, people move for all other reasons. <laughs> they move to be close to their boo. They, they move to, to um, they move for a job. They move for school. They move for opportunities. They move closer to their family so they can have more kids. Right? You, they move for all certain reasons. They move to get out of trouble. Move to, they move to get some peace or whatever. But how many know that it's rightly for us to move for the word? Amen. Amen. Let's move closer so we can get that word. Amen. Amen. Abide, dwell, live in his word, live by his word, live in his word. There are several believers who don't spend daily time in the word of God. It is needed for your walk with Christ. How many know we need to hear from God? Amen. Every day. <laughs> Every day. The problem is God is not, the problem isn't that God isn't speaking. The problem is we won't open the Bible and read it. <laughs> Whenever you want to hear from God, you need to open your Bible and read it. God is there. Any page you select, he's speaking. <laughs> it's just like, come on. Oh, oh ooh. and I'm telling you, learning how to and not just read it, but to digest it, to ingest it, to, to receive the word of God. James 1 says, um, with meekness, receive the engrafted word of God. And, uh, with meekness, there's a certain way that you, need, you and I need to receive the word. We receive it with humility. We receive it with meekness let, and let that word be engrafted in us. Let that word grab a hold of us so it can save our souls. This is, he's talking to believers. I didn't know that our soul needed to be saved. Your, your soul, if you're born again, your spirit was born again, but your soul isn't. Your soul needs to be saved or is being saved. There's three Three stages of salvation, right? So you like the hat. Three salvations, um, spirit, soul, and body. We were saved, we have been saved, and we shall be saved. Amen? And there, there's a com coming to a point where in Romans 8, it talks about our body's been saved. Our redemption will be complete then. So you were, you are, and you'll be, you shall be. Amen? So the word of God will save your soul. It will save your will. It will save your emotions. Go with me to uh, Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4. We're talking about be the believer's digest. The believer's digest. Proverbs chapter 4, and let's look at verse 20. We know that this is a father's instruction for his son and we can apply it to the word of God. My son, be attentive to my words and incline your ear to my sins. Incline, are we listening to his word? Are we inclining our ears to his words? To love God is to love his word. You cannot say, I love God. <laughs> you know, and I think sometimes people, when they use that word love, they look at it as being emotional. They emotionally are driven by something. I, I have feelings. That's what, you know, they're in their feelings. Um, I think Drake got a song called In My Feelings, right? Um, in my feelings, like, oh, I, I feel like, I feel like. Now we're walking by our feelings, right? Feel like, you feel like. I feel like you're wrong. You feel like. Your feelings are not meant to guide you. Feelings come and go. You don't feel like going to work, but you go to work. <laughs> you don't feel like going to church. You, you know, you make yourself. It don't matter what you feel like. You wake up and, you know, I don't feel like taking care of this baby. You, don't ha you have no choice. You, you know what I'm saying? Feel like. A lot of Christians, they live by feel like. I feel like. I feel like praising God. And when the feelings are gone, I don't feel. When the music is not there, can you praise God when it's cold in the room and it's, it's a Monday, Monday, and, and it's, it's boring and it's dryness, and you have to say, Lord, I love you. Or And you pray in tongues when, when you sense something and when you don't. When it's dry and when it, you feel the fervent of the Spirit. 
<laughs> you fast when you, f- you feel like it, you don't feel like it. Because we're to walk by faith and not by sight, not by our feelings, not by what we see, not by our senses. I feel like no one loves me. Okay, just laugh at that, Blake. Okay. I feel silly. Okay. You feel like. But your feelings are not to, be, not to guide you. The scripture says, my son, be attentive to my words, incline your ear to my sins. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. We're not to let the word of God escape from our eyes. We're blessed, according to Revelation, if we even read the word and we worship what we behold. Whatever we behold, we become like. Have you ever noticed that a, a couple who's been married for years because they've been beholding each other, they start looking alike? We become what we behold. And if we behold God in his word, we become like him. Let's look for him in his word. Let's search the scriptures, for in them you'll find life. Amen. And then we worship what we behold. um, The latter part of this verse says, if we'll keep the word of God in our hearts. It says... um, Keep them within your heart. Keep these words within your heart. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, David says, I I hid your word in my heart so I won't sin against you. Let's hide his word. You're going to need the word. Listen, trials are coming your way. And that's not a prophecy. That's because you're living in a fallen world. You're going to have some trials. Things are not going your way (laughs) most of the time, 99.9% of the time. (laughs) But guess what? That word is to prepare you for what is to come. Now, I'm not saying if you read the word, you meditate on it, you confess it, and you live it out, and you fill yourself with the word, you're not going to have any trials. No. You're actually probably going to have more trials. Now, I want to do a sermon called... Um, things that will hinder the word. There are certain things that will hinder the word of God in your life. Certain things that will make the word of God of none effect in your life. Worrying is, a, is, is one of the things that will stop the word from working. Deceitfulness of riches is another. The love for other things will stop you from, from the word working in your life. So it's not enough just to hear the word, read it, memorize it, confess it, um, pray it. But you got you got to you got to make sure you check your heart. You got to soften your heart and open your heart up open. You got to receive what you read. You got to receive what you hear. Are, Are you with me? It's not enough to hear it. Hearing alone. Is not enough. And the deception is, if I hear it, I'm doing it. It's not so. Praise and worship, for example. Just because we hear praise and worship doesn't mean we're praising. That's a trick of the devil. Sometimes you need to turn off your favorite praise and worship leader and worship God by yourself. Get on your knees, walk your floor, and lift up your hands and and tell Jesus how much you love him. Tell Father God that he's worthy and begin to praise his name. Your kids need to not only hear you hear and see you listening to gospel music and praise and worship, but to see you praising God. Hallelujah. I worship you, Jesus. You need to walk the floor worshiping God, thanking God for who he is. The deception is if I'm listening to it, because it's ministering to me, then I'm doing it. The same thing can be true by sermons or podcasts or reading a book. Because I'm reading it doesn't mean that I'm doing it. Doesn't mean that it's part of my life. Just because, you know what I'm saying, like I have a lot of books, but just because I have a lot of books doesn't mean that those truths in those books are, are, are my reality. And one of the things that you have to guard against It's thinking that, oh, yeah, you're living out this this kingdom. You're living out the relationship with Jesus because you hear about it. We must hide that word in our hearts. 
Hide it. Hide it in your heart because one day you're going to need it. When, 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 when the enemy comes, the Bible talks about an evil day. When the evil day shows up at your house, you got to have that word in you. The word that you put in today will be the word that you need tomorrow. Hide that word in your heart. When temptation comes, you can put out the word. What, this is what the word of God says, because Jesus demonstrated to us that when the enemy comes and like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him through the word that's hidden in your heart. So you get that word in your heart when temptation comes. No, it is written. How did Jesus defeat the devil? He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. He had the word of God in him for the Holy Spirit to work and to bring to his remembrance. Jesus said that the spirit of God will bring all things to your remembrance of what I've said. But the problem with some Christians is they don't have anything in them for the Holy Spirit to bring to their remembrance. The problem is that because the God created the word, you know, the spirit of God was there waiting for the word to be spoken. When the word was spoken, that's when he manifested and, 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 and brought to life that word that was spoken. So just so you need a, an abundance of the word of God in your life. When fear comes, you have that word. When, when, when lack of finances are happening, you have that word. When, when there's no joy, you have that word. Come on. When, when, when all hell is breaking loose, you have that word. You got to get the word in your heart. You got, let, let's go over to the scripture in, in um, Colossians 4, Colossians chapter 4, excuse me, Colossians chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Colossians chapter 3. Let's look at verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. There are some believers who are, who, who, who are poor in the word. You know, I had church. I, 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 oh, it was good. It was real good. No, you got to get that word in you. And you got to be intentional with it. All right. So the word of God is strength. We need it to live. It is the joy. It's the word of God is, it sustains us. Go back to um, Proverbs 4, 22. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. The believers digest. We need to daily have a daily intake of the word of God. Verse 23, 22, I'm sorry. For they are life to those who find them and healing to, their, to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance from, from it flow the springs of life. It says the word of God, if you find the word of God, there are life, there's life in the word. There's life in the word. Come on. Let that ring in. There's life in the word of God. This word has enough power in it to raise somebody up from the dead. If God used his word to create the world, that word has enough power in it, creative power to bring all this into existence. Don't you think that that word could destroy cancer? It can destroy COVID-19 in your body. That word, that intake of that word, why, why, this is why I listen to healing scriptures. That word, th there have been many a testimonies of men and women who, who were on a deathbed and, and somebody played healing scriptures. And though that, that word, that power in the word of God began to do a work in their body. There was a young man, he was um, challenged. He, he, he failed all of his classes, at least most of his classes, and he started memorizing Proverbs. By the end of his memorization, he went from failing to getting straight A's. That word will change your mind. Whatever that is rewiring and causing you to not 
be able to comprehend something, that word will kick in and bring you light. Let me show you the scripture in James, John chapter 1. So what, 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 we, we speak the word every week, right? After prayer, we do our, our declarations, our confessions. Don't you know that word is working? What we're, what we're confessing is happening. It, it, of course, it's not happening when, when we want it, but it's happening. God is using our faith and our confession to bring to pass what is word, because that's word based. John chapter one, verse four says this, in him was life and the life was the light of men. Um, in him was life and the life was the development of men. God's word has life in it. Jesus said in John chapter six, verse 23, he says, the words that I speak to you, they, uh, excuse me, John chapter six, verse 63 says, the words that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. God's word is spirit words. It's spirit breathed words. It's life. It will produce life in your marriage, life in your finances, life in your body, life in your mind, life in any circumstances. God's word has creative power. It will undo that which the enemy has done. The word will redeem the time. The word will cause what, what you missed, many opportunities that we've missed, the word of God will go to work and redeem the situation. Come on. Amen. He'll make it right. He'll make the crooked straight yeah. through the word of God. God is a God that he, he, he communicates the words. He, does, he doesn't give us, and I believe in signs and wonders. We just got finished saying the God of signs and wonders, right? We believe that. What I'm saying is he could have communicated any way he wanted to with humanity, but he chose words. Mm -hmm. What he chose was to give us words. Yeah. Ten Commandments. You know, Moses, go up, Moses goes up to the mountain and he comes back with Ten Commandments. Words. Words. He didn't give us a sign, you know, like, like you know, or I know pe people wear crosses and they get it tatted and whatnot. But, but th th that's, not, that's not necessary Christianity just because you get a, a, a cross. And most of the crosses that we see are not really the type of cross that Jesus died on. <laughs> You know, they think about the T, but some have said that it was more like a let T. Some was more like that. I don't know. I mean, there's many debates about it. There's volumes of books written on what type of cross it was. People have spent lifetime studying that. I don't know. <laughs> God bless them. Uh, I don't think it really matters. The point is the blood, <laughs> right? I'm sorry. I don't want to dis disregard their labor. God communicates with his people with words. He's given us words, his words. Genesis to Revelation is life in it. It's wisdom. Everything you need in life is found in the word. His word is food for our spirits. If you want more life, pour his word into your heart. I told you recently, I've been listening to the Dwell app. If you don't have it, make an investment. I, I, I think it's $20 a, month, a year. And I think for a lifetime subscription, it was at one point $150, $175. It's worth it because you can select a passage and you can just go to bed. Or when you're working out, just listening to it. That word is the word of God. I mean, I'm telling you, and I, and I made a mistake last week, and I said I, I listened to the Psalms for nine hours. It takes about four hours, but what happened is I had it on repeat, and it was nine. You know, by the time I was getting dressed to the time it, it, it was nine hours, it just repeated itself. So it takes about four and a half hours to read the entire, all the books of Psalms. And, but I'm telling you that that word, I slept so good. More so than worship. I usually I go to bed listening to um, I, I'm William Augusto. I'm trying to make him a millionaire, and, and and I play his music all the time. He's just playing worship, you know, music unto the Lord. What they call soaking music, and and I'm telling you, it's it's anointing. It's wonderful. It creates heaven in your your house. But that word is another level. Thank God for the presence through worship. There's nothing like the word of God. 
it, it, it does it does something different. It and and, and it, word and spirit, um, they're going to produce the same thing. Colossians tells us to be filled with the Spirit. I mean, um, excuse me. If um, Ephesians tells us to be be filled with the Spirit, Colossians tells us uh, let the Word of Christ dwell in us. Let us know that both Word and Spirit will produce the same thing. But what I'm trying to tell you is that Word will strengthen you in ways. It will heal you. It will bring a permanent healing in your life. God has given us his word. I've seen his word change some things. I've seen his word causes men and women to live in the midst of a dying situation. Amen. All right. So let me give you this feeding on the word of God, digesting the word of God. It gives us wisdom to be saved and to serve the Lord. Second Timothy 3, 14 through 17 tells us that. The word of God gives us life. The word of God helps us, keeps us from sinning. Did y'all know that? Of course. Hide your word in your heart so I won't sin against you. The word of God keeps us from deception, from us being deceived. The word of God reveals God's plan for humanity. Listen to this. God's word, John chapter 15, verse 3, Jesus says, the words that I've spoken will, you are clean through the words that I've spoken unto you. The word of God cleanses us. It cleanses our hearts. It cleanses our mind. How many know you need to take a shower every day or a bath or something? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Don't be like PD who went on a mission trip who for three weeks I did um, because I didn't like the shower. I didn't like what was at the bottom of the shower. I did, I did um, a, a, a wash up for three weeks. <laughs> Courtney's like, you're nasty. <laughs> but I didn't, we were in Jamaica and we stayed in the school and um, I guess the women's were real nice. The guys was not. I was like, no, thank you. So me and the young men, we did wash-ups every day. I bought, like, all these um, face cloths from Walmart. You know, they real cheap, like $3 for 20 of them. And I was like, <laughs> we're going to do this three more weeks. <laughs> but how I many know you need to do something? <laughs> Sorry. Had nothing to do with this. Um, I'm telling you, the Word of God cleanses your mind from worldly contamination. There are things that get on you. There's things that get in your mind. You know, there's some, I heard Kenneth E. Hagin say this, that certain books he read were very dangerous to his faith and they stayed with him for like 40 years. You gotta be careful what you expose yourself to, both through this and this. Eye gates, ear gate, right? You got your ears. You gotta be careful what you hear you got to be careful what you see. It affects you in ways. I'm telling you things that we see. And so recently I was in South Carolina for Christmas and I had a dream. The first night I was there, I had a dream. And in this dream, I saw snakes coming out of my ears. Baby snakes. And my cousin was right here standing next to me and I said, hey, She's more like a sister. So I said, hey, can you take my arm and move it so that I won't get bitten by a snake? Because they were coming out. And what happened was um, one bit me, and then one took off running, and then she took off after that to kill it or something. I don't know what she was doing. And so I was like, oh, man. So I woke up, told Courtney, and she said, oh. What do you think it means? I was like, I don't know. Just I need to guard my ears. Maybe that's what it means. I mean, you know, practically. So I called the man of God, or a friend of mine who who the Lord uses with interpretation of dreams. I said, Hey, I had this dream, you know, and I never really come to him with much like that, you know. And I said, What do you think it means? He goes in tongues, and gets the interpretation of the dream. He says, The snakes represent all the doubt and unbelief coming out. I was like, my God. He said, what did you think it mean? I said, I thought it meant like, you know, I need to guard my ears. But again, I didn't think about the fact they were coming out. They weren't trying to get in, they were coming out. So I, all I'm saying is be careful what you're listening to. Music, television shows, books that you read, audibles, podcasts, YouTube, TikTok. I had to get off of TikTok. Yes. 
Jesus, and I'm not preaching against TikTok. I'm not saying it's the portal to hell. I'm not saying that. But I had to get out because it's just like, he's bringing stuff and like, what? And you'll find yourself three, four, five hours. Like, oh, snap. <laughs> um, you got to know how to protect yourself. You got to guard. And so this scripture in Proverbs 4, let's go over there. This is my last scripture, Proverbs chapter 4. It says to guard your heart with all vigilance. You got to guard your heart. Your eyes and your ears are gateways into your heart. The Bible says it's what comes out of a man that makes him defile, right? And so we need to guard our hearts. And how do you guard your heart? Through what you hear and what you see, digesting the word, put that word in front of you, put that word in your ears, put that word on your mouth. You, these are the ways in which you things get in your heart. So let's look at the scripture again. Proverbs chapter four. He says this. He says, verse 23, keep your heart with all vigilance from from it flow the spirit of life, the springs of life. I'm sorry, the springs of life. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. That means guard your eyes, guard your ears, and guard your mouth. Set a watch over your eyes. Set a watch. You know, you, you, you can't, sometimes you can't forget something that you see. Sometimes you can't forget what you hear. I'm telling you, I remember things when I was three, four, five years old. I'm telling you, I, it's because I heard stuff and I saw things. You got to guard these things. All right. The devil. So, so the word of God cleanses, our, cleanses us from worldly intimidation and contamination. The word of God helps us feeding of the word of God helps us fight the devil. The Bible calls in Ephesians 6, 17, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And, and above all, the word of God reveals who the triune God is. So let me give you some practical steps. How? Well, before I give it to practical, let me just tell you how to daily ingest the word of God. It's, these are nine ways in which you and I can daily ingest the word of God. One, very simple, read it. You'll be surprised how many Christians do not read their Bible every day. Read the word of God every day. We got a Bible plan, three to four chapters a day. Read it. Make yourself read. Discipline yourself. Every day, I'm going to at least read three to four chapters a day. I heard, one of the things I heard about Kenneth, uh, sorry, about Frederick K.C. Price, he, before, he said, they said that he, he committed to reading the Bible 10, 10 chapters a day. He read the Bible, he read at least 10 chapters a day and prayed in tongues an hour a day. That's pretty good, right? So here we see um, we need to read it. You need to read the Bible. There's no, you got to make yourself read. I don't care if you're not a reader. And, and, and listening to it and reading it are two different things. Come on. Make yourself sit down and read it. All right, number two, you need to study it. So you got to go beyond just reading it. There has to be a, you have to be a student of the Bible. You got to sit down, get your Bible out and get your concordance and, and, and you got to read passages and over and over again. You got to look at well, why did Paul say this? Why did Peter say this? And how does this relate to Moses? And what David, how does David play in and so forth? You got to, you got to sit down and study it. You are a Christian. That means you are called to be a disciple, a disciplined follower. So let's be disciplined in studying the scriptures, not only reading it. Reading is the first part, but let that reading boil into studying it. All right, next one is memorize it. You got to memorize the scriptures. Old fashioned. Get your some index cards, pick them up at Walgreens, <laughs> write it out, type it on a computer. Put, you know, now you got apps and stuff. I mean, just do something. Get that word of God, memorize it. And not just your favorite verse. <laughs> you want to memorize passages, you want to memorize it in context, right? Because you can say, I can do all things. That means I can take somebody's wife. Mm, nah. 
<laughs> uh, go and do likewise. Judas just killed himself. So let me go. You know, uh, you, you can read the scriptures out of context, right? So, so you you want to memorize it passages. Then the next one, number four, listen to it. Listen to the word. So I suggest that you get some. There's plenty of free stuff on YouTube where you can listen to it. I mean, you, you might as well listen to it, right? You, you got to commute. Maybe your commute is 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Maybe you got to go to the store. Why, you know, instead of calling somebody, just put, put your ear pods in and listen to the scriptures. All right. Number five, you got to believe it. So not only should you read it, study it, memorize it, and listen to it, you got to believe what you're listening to. You got to believe what you're re reading. You got to believe what you're memorizing. Believe it. I believe this. Amen. Um, number six, you got to pray it. Pray scriptures. Find scriptures that cover your case. And you pray and you stand in the word. You stand on the word that you're praying for. Number seven, you got to confess it. Find scriptures to confess. When you're going through, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Before, sometimes there, there might be a tendency to get intimidated by a bunch of people and I have to do like a presentation or something. And I will quote 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I thank you that the greater one is inside of me. I thank you that I do this presentation unto the Lord. I thank you, Lord. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I'm telling you, it takes away all the fear for this presentation. So you got to confess the scriptures. I, I use triggers. And what do you mean, Pastor Dwayne? If I know that I'm going to my car, I'll confess Psalm 32, verse 8. Lord, you said in your word, you instruct me and teach me in the way that I should go and guide me with your eye. You said in your words, Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I thank you that my steps are ordered. So every time I go to the car, I'm thinking you will instruct me and teach me in the way that I should go and guide me with your eye. I thank you that my, step, the, my, my steps are ordered by you. I thank you that my steps are ordered. I'm good because of the blood of Jesus. And I thank you that my steps are ordered by you. You order my steps. You lead me. You guide me. I thank you. I have a decision to make. Re, re, um, I have a decision to make. And so I'm confessing. I, I, am the, I, am the, I am a sheep of the great shepherd. I know his voice, John 10. I know his voice and the strangers I will not follow. I thank you that I know the voice of God. I thank you that I know the Holy Ghost. He leads me. He guides. Me. That's what I'm confessing. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like you do that all the time. See, the problem is this, this faith stuff doesn't work. No, you got to do it all the time. It must be part of your life. I got Destin trained so well. He'd be like, you have what you say. Be careful. <laughs> He'll correct me and Courtney in a minute. <laughs> you have what you say. Daddy, you better, you better watch, what, watch your confession. Don't say you can't afford something. Say right now, I choose, we choose not to buy it. <laughs> Let's believe God for it. Amen. Or the timing is not now. So you got to take your word, take that word and put it on your mouth. I'm telling you, your life will change. Uh, today's going to be a good day. <laughs> I, I have even Jacobo, they be on the way to school. We, we confess it. I'm sharp. I'm smart. I'm bright. I'm good looking. I'm, I'm healthy and I'm wealthy. And, and, and they'll confess I'm a, I'm a godly man and I'm going to marry a godly woman. I'm going to raise godly children. And I, I'm a leader among my peers and I follow Jesus. And I, and I got them confessing the scriptures every single day. Amen. Amen. You got to take that word and put it in your mouth and say nothing other than what the word says. I, you know, um, yesterday before Destin went to go get his booster, I mean, I'm sorry, the, um, his shot, um, vaccination, vaccination shot. I said, you're going to you're going to confess. I fear nothing. I fear nothing. I, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. God has not given me the spirit. of God has not given me the spirit of fear. But daddy, no, 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 no buts with God. But God, who is rich in mercy, right? But no, not the other but. But that's doubt. And so he's confessing. He went in there. He said, what am I going to get? Because I went in and I got my shot. And I didn't cry. Years, of, year, over years and years and years, I've been crying. Uh, and, and doctors and nurses holding him down. 
Thank God. The power of the word. I'm not afraid of anything or anyone. <laughs> I have him confess every day. I'm not afraid of the dentist. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have him confess because why fear? Fear. Don't train your kids in fear. Train them in faith. We can believe God. Amen. Yeah, things are tight, but thank God it's an opportunity to believe the word of God. Amen. Amen. Number eight. I got two more. This one and the next one. Meditate it. You got to meditate the word. So while you're on your bed, think about it. Mm. Thank you, Lord. The integrity of the upright should guide them. The integrity of the upright should guide them. That's in Proverbs. The integrity of the upright should guide them. Thank you, Lord. Go to bed thinking about a passage. The creation story. Man. Oh. Thank you, Lord. This being Satan has nothing new under the sun. So he's trying to get me to doubt the word of God like he did Eve. Hmm, meditating. Are you, are you seeing... Meditation. Meditation becomes part of you. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So meditate that scriptures. Uh, you know, I will praise, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in what? <laughs> Are you complaining? Or are you praising? You know, you can complain about the fact that you don't have enough money, but thank God that you, you, your bills are paid. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. I praise you that every bill is paid. And maybe not all bills are paid. Maybe one bill is paid. I thank you that this one bill is paid. So I thank you. I'm telling you, you, you will increase your capacity to receive more from God if you enter into Thanksgiving. So I'm I, instead of complaining about the one pinky that's hurting, thank God for the nine that's working. Thank you, Lord. I may not have the best kids, but I thank you for my kids I got. I thank you. I praise you. I may only have one dog. I used to have two, but I thank you for the one that I have. Come on. Cultivating Thanksgiving. The word tells us that, right? Um, let give you a scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. In, every, in everything, not for everything, but in everything. Lord, I, so the word tells us what to do. Sometimes you don't have to pray about it. You just got to look at what the word says. Sometimes people are like, just pray. Just pray I do right. No, just do right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is what the word says. Like, just pray. You know, pray, pray to have, make it to church. No, no, just come to church. Come on. You don't have to pray to make it to church. Like, I mean, the word tells us sometimes we're looking for something supernatural when the word, has, word is supernatural. God has give, given us what we need. I'm sorry. Amen. And the last one is to obey it. That's connected with meditation. All right, here are the practical steps. <laughs> He's like, this is a long sermon. Like, I'm, I'm combining a whole series in one. <laughs> you got to make time for the word. So I'm going to give you some practical, practical ways to digest this word. So I gave you nine ways to ingest the word, digest the word, right? So here are some practical ways. You ready? Read it while you're on the toilet. You got time. Have you a Bible, a specific Bible just for the bathroom and read it while you're on the toilet? You got time. You're on the throne, so why don't you go to the throne through his word? Very practical. You'll never forget that. Read it when you wake up and before you go to, the be before you go to bed. Let's say, I'm, I'm going to read a passage. It could be four or five chapters, I mean, verses. It could be a chapter, two or three, or a whole book. I mean, there's some books real small, right? First John, second John, third John, Philemon, Jude. I mean, this is one chapter. Like, I mean, all right. Um, read it on your lunch break. Or read it after dinner. That's, that's a way to do it, right? Instead of looking at all your, I'm, I'm, again, you, you can, it's not a sin to look at your favorite shows, right? I'm not against it. Y'all know that I'm not against that. Gangster pastor, right? <laughs> Mafia, Lord deliver PD. <laughs> but I found out that a lot of other pastors look at gangster movies, so I felt good. I'm, I'm in good company. Bishop Bailey, my bishop, looks at gangster movies. I'm like, oh, I'm in good company, because I was afraid to tell him that I looked at some movies. He's like, you sinner, son, come here, come out. <laughs> I, was, I thought he was going to say that. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, I look at mafia movies. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> And one, a good friend of mine, he's a pastor in South Carolina, um, lower parts of South Carolina. He, um, 
I just found out he he had me read his um um for do a forward for his book and he had me read it and I found out that he looked at mafia movies through reading the book. So I sent him two DVDs of a mafia that's not you can't find it on YouTube or anywhere. I sent it to him for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, I'm in good company. These guys are watching and girls watching mafia movies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you somebody else, but I ain't gonna tell her business. Somebody else look at, oh, oh, a, a general in the faith, she looks at movies. And you can guess who she is. We'll talk afterwards. <laughs> All right. So instead of just always looking at your favorite shows, read the word, study the word. Now, this is another practical one. Print it out, post it around your house. Little post its, you know, they, they're there for a reason, right? <laughs> so write it, or I put, put it on your screen. On your phone screen, your iPad, your computer, put scriptures up. Make it like make it a, a project. What are you doing? I'm working on something. I'm working on my faith. I'm working on something. Constantly have it on. Listen to it while driving or working out or while in the shower. You can even put it in a little shower. They have little shower music things. Put the word on. Hey, hey, first John, I'm gonna read. Listen to first John while I'm taking a shower. I mean, you got time. It's a little small book, five chapters. And I'm telling you, that, that word will get in your subconscious. It'll get in your heart. Next thing you know, you're like, whoa. I'm, I'm, this is a side story. I used to work at Red Lobster. I was in Bible college, and I, I was working at Red Lobster, and they knew that I was saved, right? So I'm, I'm on the line, and I'm, I'm actually making, um, I'm on the line. So I'm putting the food on the plate, making sure that it's presentable. And so one young lady, she, her folks are from Philly, and she liked Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Like, she was listening to it. And so we're, you know, she, she play, had it played every, time, every night. So I'm, like, listening to it. And before I even knew it, I start singing the song. And she said, oh, no, baby. The devil got to leave here. You got to give me that Christian CD. Put that Christian CD. But I'm saying I did it unconsciously listening to it, and I learned the rap without even, even trying. So I'm saying that to say that your time in the Word will profit you. All right? And here I got a couple more before we let you go. Um, get, a reader, get a reader's Bible. What is a reader's Bible? It's a Bible without verses and chapters. And read it. It's, it it'll do amazing things, things for you. There are Bibles now, mainly in the ESV, but there's some in, uh, there's a couple in the King, a New King James Version where you can, they, they removed all the chapters and verses and you can just read. I mean, it's just like one big story. So the, it's the whole book of Genesis. Verses and chapters are a blessing and a curse because they can interrupt the flow of what God is trying to say. Just because there's a chapter there doesn't mean that it was supposed to stop there. All right. So, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, get you a reader's Bible and just, I mean, you can buy them as cheap as, you know, $25. And that's, and that's really a little bit more. You probably can do it for cheaper than that. And then last is to study a passage or a chapter or a book for a month or two and look at it in different translation and go over and over again. In other words, select a small, start out with selecting a small book, such as 1 John or Philippians or Colossians, and read it about 25 times a week. What you're doing is you're equipping your spirit for meditation. So take, your, take a book of John or, or, or Ephesians or, or a, a small book like Malachi and read it over and over, 25 to 100 times a week. And you'll be amazed what God will do with that passage. We're talking about digesting the word of God, getting the most out of your Bible time, not just reading the Bible, not just surface reading, but get, trying to get the most out of it. Amen. I pray that you were blessed by that. How many enjoy that? Amen. How many is going to do that? You're going to apply those things. If, you, if you're not already doing it, make it a habit. Make it a habit. Father God, I thank you for your word. Your word is life. Your word gives us life. I thank you.